Well, the, the China issue is is really kind of the, the linchpin issue of our time. I think it's it's the new Cold War. In this video, we're going to go over some of the frightening ways the Chinese Communist Party is the largest threat to democracy in the coming decades. And we're going to break down a few clips of Melissa Chen, who really knows what she's talking about when it comes to this topic. And a warning, some of this stuff will probably scare you, but it's crucial to know and understand it. Um, and China's willing to play the long game. So it is still a Leninist, Leninist Marxist government. Xi Jinping still believes in all of that. That's why it's still so totalitarian. But it's, you know, they, they know that like the way to get, gain power in the world is to get rich. And they did it on some, you know, on the backs of, on the back of trade with other countries through very unfair practices, actually, in many cases. So if you think about like how they, I think there's, there are a lot of estimates of how much they've actually stolen from the United States in terms of intellectual property, um, corporate, corporate espionage. Um. Americans need to grasp the reality that China is run by a single party that has been in power for decades. And that party is seeking to become the number one global superpower. To top things off, it's an authoritarian government. Melissa says something very interesting and it's important to break it down. Um, what world order do we want? Do, are we going to abandon the liberal world order that was established after World War II? And what's going to take its place? That's really what China represents. And it's, it's the way things are evolving is, is pretty interesting. Countries are lining up and taking sides in this, right? So Russia, China, there's this new axis, and then there are the new allies. And, you know, the question of, for our time is, well, which side are the people who live in the free societies like we do, what, where are they going to stand? What she's talking about here is the fact that America and China are fundamentally different in a nerve wracking kind of way. So there's this book titled Destined for War by Harvard professor Graham Allison, and in it, he outlines the stark contrast between the two superpowers. And quite frankly, it should scare anyone who values freedom. Take a look at this table. Allison outlines the ideological differences from perspectives such as core value, form of government, and foreign policy. The core value of America is freedom, while the core value of China is order. The form of government of America is a democratic republic, while China's is responsive authoritarianism. Foreign policy from an American perspective is centered around the international order, but from China's perspective, it's about harmonious hierarchy. What's terrifying about all this is that if the Chinese Communist Party does gain power in the world, we have no idea how they'll exert influence. And if I had to take a guess, it would not be a pretty picture. We're dealing with a regime that has a completely different philosophy of how things should work. They see the Western world as an obstacle to their power. They largely distrust America and have taken steps to deter America's power in so many stealthy ways it'll drive you crazy learning about it. That's what No, it was. but this, this was this was different. The head of the, the chemistry department at Harvard was found to have lied about receiving money from the Chinese government. So there's this program called mm. the Thousand Talents Program in China. Basically, they're offering a lot of money. The New York Times did a really good expose on this. Um, they basically offer money to like academic, because you know, it kind of sucks to be one here in the sense of like, you're not paid that well, right. but China's dangling like a lot more money and say, okay, if you, if you do research here in China, um, there's going to be like less bureaucracy. Um, mm. So that's their way to lure these people in. Right? So he was hiding the fact that he was, was getting hiding. income from Correct. them? So why does this matter? What is the implication of buying out a professor? Well, if this is how the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, thinks and operates, then they can do the same thing to our government officials. This phenomenon is called elite capture. The CCP finds a way to bribe people of a higher social status that have influence. These people then go and spread the word that America is on the decline and that the new world order is going to involve China at the top. Basically, this is corruption at its finest. I made another video outlining Mitch McConnell's scandalous ties to China in another video, which I'll have linked in the description box below and in the info card above if you're interested. Oh, so Are you really worried about a hot war? Um, we're definitely in, the, in a cold war right now with China, yeah. it feels. But, you know, China does have military ambitions. I mean, the, the, their actions in the South China Sea have shown that they, they do want to be at least militarily strong. 
Despite the low probability of a hot war, we are in and have been embroiled in a cold war for some time now. Economic warfare has been happening under our noses for the past few decades. Anyone who wants to learn more about this can read a book titled War by Other Means, Geoeconomics and Statecraft. China is seeking to dominate and become the global superpower through six spheres of influence according to Brigadier General Robert Spaulding. The economy, the military, global diplomacy, technology, education, and infrastructure. So this is crucial because if all of this is happening in the background and we're not even aware of it, how are we supposed to fix it? My biggest worry is actually AI. It's China is spending, if you look at in all the areas where China's putting money on and in um, AI, they're outspending the US in terms of investing and in developing the technology, AI companies, and what's gonna happen when that technology really becomes ripe is they're going to have first dibs and the power to, you know, effectively either export their techno surveillance state to, to the rest of the world. It's not only artificial intelligence that we have to worry about, it's also the development of 5G technology. Brigadier General Robert Spaulding states in his book Stealth War, something that might shock you. Let's be totally clear. Anything connected to an unsecured 5G network will be a potential weapon that can be used to gain geopolitical influence and control. If China were to control a 5G network, it would be able to weaponize the technology within entire cities or entire countries served by that network and hold that city or state at its mercy. Okay, so now that we've established all of this, what's next? Is there a way out of this problem? What should the West do about it? I, I actually was a huge supporter of the trade war um, as we need to make China feel the pain economically. I know it's going to cause us pain too, but it's one of those things where if we don't use that, I don't know what else. The other thing is businesses, right? So not just the governments, but really businesses need to be more aware of this and and take responsibility for for standing on values, not surrendering those to profit motives. But seeing how China runs its own country, if you know that that's going to be what's in store for the whole world, do we want to go there? Mm. And we need more people in the entertainment industry to kind of tell these stories, you know, sound the warning bells, um, and, and assemble, I don't know, an alliance of people that just do not want to live under a world order that China controls. Certain policy perspectives need to be considered to combat the CCP on all levels. And as Melissa Chen pointed out, companies and entertainers need to take a stance on this issue so that the American public is made more aware. Hey, this is a problem. And when the American public is more aware, we can actually take steps to protect ourselves. If we look at the FBI website, we see a surprising quote from FBI Director Christopher Wray. The greatest long-term threat to our nation's information and intellectual property and to our economic vitality is the counterintelligence and economic espionage threat from China. The situation has gotten so bad that of the FBI's nearly 5,000 active counterintelligence investigations across the country, almost half are related to China, with the Bureau opening a new China-related counterintelligence case every 10 hours. If you want to dive deeper into understanding the differences between the US and China on a philosophical level, click on the video that's on the screen right now. I'll see you on the next one.